Good afternoon. So we're coming to the end of our time in Florida and uh, the boat owner has requested that we do just general engine maintenance. So if you look back on uh, one of our earlier videos, there's a video of changing the fuel filters on this uh, cute little Westerbeek. And now we're going to change the zinc. So there's a few zincs on uh, almost every marine engine has zincs. We can get into a long discussion, but the short version is you have different types of metal and you have salt water and the salt water turns the different type of metals into a battery and eats one of the metals. Uh, and that's bad because the engine needs all the metals that it has. So if it starts eating one of them, bad. So that's a simple version. If uh, anyone's ever curious, we can give you a long version. But zinc is the metal that within reason burns better than everything else. So there's a piece of zinc that is bolted to the engine and it's designed to sacrifice its life for the engine so that the engine continues to run. Today we're doing the heat exchanger which is like the radiator on a car. It takes ocean water up on one side, uh, engine coolant water on the other side and it transfers the heat which is why it's called the heat exchanger but because it has ocean water flowing through it and there are different types of metals in it the ocean water turns it into a battery and eats it up so it has on the ocean water side um, a zinc so this is the zinc for this engine and what will happen over time is that this it's called a pencil zinc but this little pencil of zinc will literally burn away and get flushed away uh, over time so we may or may not need to change it, but we're at least going to uh, check the one that's in there. And in our opening conversation, I'm showing you a good one, just so you know what we're talking about. What you're going to look for on your heat exchanger, it will probably be green and nasty looking. That's the norm, uh, unless your engine is brand new. And um, because it's trying to prevent corrosion and it gets corroded. But you're gonna look for the head, it's going to look like that. On bigger engines, it's bigger. It doesn't get much smaller than this. But uh, so you're going to look around your heat exchanger until you find something like that sticking out. And then all you do is pull it out like it's a bolt. And uh, we'll do that in a second. I just want you to understand what we're doing. So you just look around on the heat exchanger until you find something that looks kind of like that. And then you pull it out. Uh, a couple of things to keep in mind. On this boat, the engine is way up above the water line. On most boats, the engine is at or below the water line. So when you pull this thing out, water will pour out of it. <laughs> so there's two ways to stop it. One uh, is you can kind of ignore it. You pull the piece out and you stick your thumb on it because there won't be a lot of pressure. You can check everything, do everything, but if you take your thumb off, water will pour in. The other is you can close the seacock for your engine cooling. So um, on this boat we don't have to do it, but don't forget on most boats uh, you either have to close the seacock or not be startled when uh, water starts pouring out and you just put your thumb on it. It is so low pressure, um, there's no real pressure. Uh, but it is disconcerting if you forget and water starts pouring out. So that's the deal. On this boat, uh, Magic Vitae is going to have to uh, move around, but we'll show you where uh, the zinc is on this boat and what it looks like. And then we'll pull it out. She may or may not be able to get a camera angle where you can see it, uh, but hopefully she can. And then uh, we'll look at it. I'll show you what the old one looks like, and you'll be able to compare it to the new one. We'll probably change it no matter what, just so that it uh, takes some pressure uh, off of the, the boat owner and because we have spares. And uh, drive it back in and that's that. Uh, you do not use grease on it or anything like that. You can use a dielectric grease, uh, but me personally, and there's so many opinions in the world, no matter what you do, somebody's gonna tell you that you're wrong, somebody's gonna tell you that you're right. Uh, for me personally, I just like to clean the threads really good so we get a good uh, electrical connection to drive the new one in. Uh, it's bronze on bronze, so it's not a it's a low-tech thing, uh, but some people do like to use a dielectric grease. Um, it's okay if that's what you want to do. For me, I don't, but it, uh, that's an opinion thing, not a, a man. 
mandatory thing. And they give you good things to search on YouTube, 50 other people's opinions on it. And if you want, you can let me know what you decide. But anyway, that's the deal. So we're uh, about to end this scene and uh, go upside down and point to where uh, the ugly old one is, pull it out, and uh, roll on to chapter two. So for you, it'll be a fraction of a second. For me, I don't know. I might have to puff my cigar for a while. We'll see uh, if I'm wearing a different color t-shirt. It's tomorrow, but it uh, will all rumble, bumble, stumble forward, and I'll see you in a fraction of your seconds. Okay, so we're down in the in our little fiberglass hole here and uh, you probably have an echo 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 but whatever so a couple of things to watch out for this bolt on the end is never the zinc that is the bolt that holds on the end cap and you can see how there's a little bit of corrosion around that's because there's always no matter how cool you are there's always a little tiny bit of salt water that manages to escape somehow just because salt water does that so um, on one or both ends, almost always both ends, but occasionally not. But anyway, if, it is, uh, if it's on the end, that is the bolt that holds on the end cap, and it is not the zinc. And on this one, this right here is the zinc. So you can see how it's kind of corroded and nasty. That's one of the symptoms of it being a zinc. And uh, so that is our zinc-sized bolt. And uh, when I start to put a wrench on it, you may or may not be able to see it. But that is how you find it. Is you just sort of poke around until you find your bolt that is not on the end. And it is somewhere else. That would be the zinc. And uh, so you make sure that you uh, have your seacock closed so that water's not coming in. And don't forget when you're done to reopen it or you'll burn up your engine and uh, or just live with water pouring in and uh, so now I'm gonna go find my wrench and uh, pull this thing off but I just wanted to show you how to find it and make a quick mention do not pull the end cap um, unless you need to and today is not the day that we need to so that's it for this chapter see you in another fraction of your seconds all right so this is real world boat repairs and we don't have a socket or a box end wrench but we do have a cute little adjustable so we're doing the cute little adjustable because it's what we've got and you can see it was not very tight uh, I do remember it is bronze on bronze so uh, you don't want to go too crazy tightening these things we are above the water line. We're going to have a little bit of water come out. Oh, yeah, we've had no zinc for a while. So, here you can see the way it's supposed to look compared to the way it does look. Uh -huh. So, that's the gig. And uh, since we're here and we got the good one in the right place at the right time, I can't see it from my angle, but it just kind of shoves up in there. Hey, wait. Okay, this is a sometimes problem that you have. You'll notice I said water's going to pour out. <laughs> I didn't see it either. Uh, that is because the the remnants of the old zinc is still in there. So we're going to do. Uh, and unwanted. This is why you check it uh, regularly is to prevent from happening what just happened. Um, that the old zinc was soft but there was not enough water flow to wash away all the pieces and so there's a big piece that's stuck in there and making our life uh, more difficult than it needs to be. So uh, now we're going to get some uh, pick type things you can use a little screwdriver like an eyeglass screwdriver one of the tips that's my favorite is I will if I can reach it on bigger engines it's often easier to reach you can drill a little hole in it run a screw into it and pull it out with the screw uh, there's a couple of tricks but basically you just pick at that little puppy until uh, it comes out then the water will come out and then uh, you can put the new one in. 
Uh, the only things I have to warn you about is, as we have mentioned a few times, it is bronze, and bronze is not a hard metal. So if you're using a hard metal screwdriver with bronze threads, you want to make sure you don't mess up the threads, because that gets expensive fast. So uh, I'm going to run away and find out what kind of picky type tools we have. Uh, there's not going to be room to drill it on this uh, engine. So uh, I'm going to run away, find out what tools we have, maybe even come at it from the other side so there's some hope of seeing it, see if we can find a mirror. Mirrors are very handy. Uh, just a little tidbit since you've made it this far in the video. Should you find yourself in Sears or any place where they sell those fun little uh, mirrors on a stick, if you own a boat and you don't have one, you've made a mistake. Go buy one. Because you can poke that thing around and see what's happening in all kinds of places. And uh, so we're going to see if we have one on the boat. And uh, that's it. So uh, we're going to disappear for a while and uh, see you in a fraction of your seconds. All right, so you may or may not be able to hear me. I'm coming in from the other side. And I'm just sort of scraping this thing. The one thing that you do not want to do heavy on the do not want to do is shove the old piece up in because it's very hard to get it out oh yo yo so i'm just very lightly scraping at it staying away from the threads as much as i can and um you could probably see little pieces falling down and we are just kind of working away at this thing and the video is going to stop because uh, what my beautiful Vitae did was she uh, took a picture of this and I could see what was happening. She stuck her phone down in there, took a picture, and then I could look at that picture. We're going to do that again because we don't have the mirror on the boat. And I want to make sure that uh, I don't shove this thing in. But this looks like one access or no access where we're going to have to drill it, screw it, and pull it out. But uh, I'm not going to bore you while I reach for my phone to take a picture. I did the initial clean. I can see things falling. and From your angle, you can probably see things falling. But you'll notice things have stopped falling. So I have cleaned as much as I can clean without pushing real hard. Without pushing hard. And you do not want to push hard because uh, if there's a chunk of this zinc left and you shove it up inside, bad juju. Bad juju mom. So uh, I'm going to take a break, grab my uh, camera, take a picture of this. We might even give you a little video of the pictures so that you can see uh, what we're looking at. And uh, But this is definitely looking like one where we're going to have to uh, figure out some way to drill it and put a screw in it and pull it out. So uh, I'm going to give you the salute and uh, see you uh, in a few of your seconds. All right, so I'm still coming at this thing from upside down. But you can see we've got our drill in at a bizarre angle. As a matter of fact, I'm going to ask Vitae, do I look uh, from side to side? I can see, but up and down, do I look pretty straight going into that thing? Yes. Okay, cool. So now we're going to drill here. Okay. Yeah, we're going to go the other direction, though, so we actually drill. Now one thing when you're doing this, you do not, heavy on the knot, want to push very hard on this because A, you can push the piece of zinc in, but B, you can go through what's left, or very often there's not much left, and you do not want to poke a hole anything that's in there. There's a bunch of tiny little bronze tubes, very easy to poke a hole in them, and you do not want to do that. So this is a very, very gentle, this is more dental type drilling than it is uh, engine type drilling. So make that mention before I start uh, cutting away here. We're gonna... Drill into this puppy. Alright, I just felt it go through. There's our water. So we are through. Not 
that's all you want is just enough to be able to get the screw in. So now we're going to find the screw. And we're going to go into that same hole that we just made. So poke around a little bit for that hole. Screw into that zinc. And not too far, same thing. Don't want to. Alrighty, so that zinc is so torn up. Now that I have a, a hole in there, I'm just going to pull out the last of the chunks of it with the threads of the screw because it's not even firm enough to be able to pull out. So this is actually probably, it's no fun for me, but it's a good video for you because you get to see pretty much the worst case scenario. You can't get to it all that well. Uh, it's way beyond neglected. And uh, it broke, it needed to be drilled, it needs to be ground out. This is about uh, all of the worst case scenarios. Here you can see the old zinc oxide coming out on the screw. So uh, just remember, watch out for your threads. Don't uh, don't mess up your threads. Don't push this thing too far in because it will poke those little tubes. That's bad. It'll kill your heat exchanger. But you can just sort of clean this thing up. And now, unfortunately. The way that you tell if it's cleaned out is whether or not the new zinc will fit in. So if somebody will put into my other hand, we have other people out of camera here, putting the new zinc into my hand, I'm going to clean this up just a little bit more. And then if the new zinc fits in, it's clean. If the new zinc does not fit in, it's not clean. Pretty simple, eh? That's one of the cool things about boat repair. It's not uh, brain surgery. No offense to the brain surgeons out there. Maybe uh, people would live longer if they let boat people do the brain surgery. <laughs> but, oh yeah, there you can see we're cleaning that up. That's all the old zinc oxide that we're cleaning out. And we'll see how lucky we are here. So I've got the, the new zinc. It either goes in or it doesn't. And it doesn't. So we're cleaning some more. And uh, I'm not going to bore you to tears because this could be two or three minutes or it could be a half an hour. But whether it's two or three minutes or half an hour, it'll be the exact same thing. All you're going to see is my little screw. If you had an awesome rat tail file, that would be the correct tool, but this is real world boat repairs. We have a sheet metal screw, so that's what we're using. And, uh, but if you had a cute little rat tail file, that would be better. And it would hurt your fingers a lot less. But, uh, that's it, so I'm going to let Vidi turn off the camera. I'm just going to be doing more of the same. This way, this way, this way, this way. And uh, over and over and over, trying uh, to clean this stuff out. And then stick the new zinc in. And when I have it cleaned enough that the new zinc will go in, uh, I'll have Magic Vidi uh, turn the camera back on. So. That's the salute. See you guys in a little while. All right.
So we started this job in 1964. It's now 2019 and it is all cleaned out. That didn't take too long. And as you can see, the new one is in, it moves freely. And so at this point, all you do is just slide it up in till the threads meet. Make sure you don't cross thread because this is a water seal. And uh, screw it in. That's it, that's the totality of the job. So uh, I'm gonna do the rest of the screwing uh, while you don't see it, just because it takes a while. It's a weird angle to try to do it. But uh, one thing, uh, if it does not screw easily, get a wire brush, one of those tiny little bronze wire brushes, and um, clean the threads. Because uh, you do not want to gall or mess up the threads. This is a water seal. And uh, that's it. Then you have your new zinc in. It's all pretty. It won't stay pretty for long, so enjoy it while you have it. And uh, then you have changed your heat exchanger zinc. So until the next video, the small salute. Enjoy your boat.